Welcome to uh, Good Shepherd Lutheran Church in Peterborough, New Hampshire's uh, midweek Advent service tonight. I'm Pastor David Mueller, and uh, we're following a series written by Reverend Dr. Reed Lessing. If you're watching at home, uh, we ask that everybody would be muted. Uh, I will be reading all the words, uh, and if you have the printed bulletin uh, downloaded, uh, you can follow along and, and respond with your parts but I'll be reading straight through when we get to the hymns, which I also sent a little later today. Um, Brian will be singing those to lead us and uh, remain muted so that uh, we just record his voice um, for the recording uh, so we don't get a lot of garbled uh, sounds and can't hear what's going on. Thank you for joining us tonight. Uh, this is the second week of Advent. And uh, we continue with the uh, series called Lo, He Comes with Clouds Descending by Reverend Dr. Reed Lessing. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Endow the King with your justice, O God, the Royal Son with your righteousness. He will judge your peoples in righteousness, your affect afflicted ones with justice. The mountains will bring prosperity to the people, the hills, the fruit of righteousness. He will defend the afflicted among the people and save the children of the needy. He will endure as long as the sun, as long as the moon through all generations. He will be like rain falling on a mown field, like showers watering the earth. He will rule from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. Lo, he comes with clouds descending, once for every sinner slain. Thousand, thousand saints attending, swell the triumph of his train. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Christ the Lord returns to reign. We sing him 348, The King Shall Come. The first three verses. The King shall come when morning dawns and the light triumphant breaks. When beauty guiles the eastern hills and the life to joy awakes. Not as of old a little child to bear and to fight and die, but crowned with glory like the sun that lights the morning sky. Oh, brighter than the rising morn when Christ victorious rose and left the lonesome place of death, despite the rage of foes. We continue with our confession and absolution. Night and day, Paul earnestly prayed for the Thessalonians, people close to his heart. But Heavenly Father, we are often stuck in the past nursing old wounds, rehearsing sins of long ago, refusing to love and let go. We hold grudges, keep score, and hold on to hurts, even when people are crushed by the weight of living in this world. Engulfed in our own needs, we are blind to the needs of others and deaf to their cries for help. O oh God, we need your Holy Spirit to break our stubborn hearts heal ancient wounds, and fill us with Christ's love. Hear the gospel that gives you new life. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. May God strengthen your heart so that you will be blameless and holy in the presence of God and Father when our Lord Jesus comes with all his holy ones. Maranatha, meaning our Lord, come. Amen. Come. Lord Jesus. We sing the remaining two verses, verses four and five of The King Shall Come. Oh, 
brighter than that glorious morn shall dawn upon our race the day when christ in splendor comes and we shall see his face the king shall come when morning dawns and light and beauty brings hail christ the lord your people pray come quickly king of kings the lord be with you and also with you let us pray stir up our hearts o lord to make ready the way of your only begotten Son, that by his coming we may be enabled to serve you with pure minds through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading from Isaiah 26, verses 1 to 8. In that day, this song will be sung in the land of Judah. We have a strong city, he sets up salvation as walls and bulwarks. Open the gates that the righteous nation that keeps faith may enter. You keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. Trust in the Lord forever, for the Lord God is an everlasting rock. For he has humbled the inhabitants of the height, the lofty city, he lays it low, lays it low to the ground, casts it to the dust. The foot tramples it, the feet of the poor, the steps of the needy. The path of the righteous is level. You make level the way of the righteous. In the path of your judgments, O Lord, we wait for you. Your name and remembrance are the desire of our soul. The epistle reading from 1 Thessalonians 3, 1 to 13. Therefore, when we could bear it no longer, we were willing to be left behind at Athens alone, and we sent Timothy, our brother and God's co-worker in the gospel of Christ, to establish and exhort you in your faith, so that no one be moved by these afflictions. For you yourselves know that we are destined for this, for when we were with you, we kept telling you beforehand that we were to suffer affliction just as it has come to pass and just as you know. For this reason, I, when I could bear it no longer, I sent to learn about your faith for fear that somehow the tempter had tempted you and our labor would be in vain. But now that Timothy has come to us from you and has brought us the good news of your faith and love, and reported that you always remember us kindly and long to see us as we long to see you. For this reason, brothers, in all our distress and affliction, we have been comforted about you through your faith. For now we live as if you are standing fast in the Lord. For what thanksgiving can we return to God for you? For all the joy that we feel for your sake before our God. As we pray most earnestly night and day that we may see you face to face and supply what is lacking in your faith. Now may our God and Father himself and our Lord Jesus direct our way to you, and may the Lord make you increase and abound in love for one another and for all, as we do for you, so that he may establish your hearts blameless in holiness before our God and Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus with all his saints. And the gospel reading from Mark chapter 13, beginning at verse 11. Jesus says, And when they bring you to trial and deliver you over, do not be anxious beforehand about what you are to say, but say whatever is given you in that hour, for it is not you who speak, but the Holy Spirit. And brother will deliver brother over to death, and the father his child, and children will rise against parents and have them put to death, and you will be hated by all for my name's sake. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. But when you see the abomination of desolation standing where he ought not to be, let the reader understand, 
Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Let the one who is on the housetop not go down nor enter his house to take anything out. And let the one who is in the field not turn back to take his cloak. And alas, for women who are pregnant and for those who are nursing infants in those days, pray that it may not happen in winter. For in those days there will be such tribulation as has not been from the beginning of creation that God created until now and never will be. And if the Lord had not cut short the days, no human being would be saved. But for the sake of the luck he lacked whom he chose, he shortened the days. We confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our message this week is focused on 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, verses 10 to 13. In Jesus' name, amen. It was mid-afternoon in central China on May 12, 2008, and suddenly all hell broke loose. An earthquake hit with the magnitude of 8.0 on the Richter scale. Concrete panels, crumpled steel, and crushed tile buried tens of thousands of people. Rescue workers reported that they heard people screaming. There was hopeless and ongoing screaming. Don't lose that image. We'll come back to it several times in this sermon. Today's sermon is called Praying Like Paul and is based on 1 Thessalonians 3, 10 to 13. Let's get some context. In chapter 2, the apostle describes his relationship with the Thessalonians like a nursing mother taking care of her own children and like a father with his children. He even writes, we were ready to share with you not only the gospel of God, but also our own selves, because you had become very dear to us. Paul is no armchair theologian. Paul doesn't sit in an ivory tower. Paul is anything but aloof and distant. Paul dearly loved these people. But then the earthquake hit, figuratively speaking. Paul and his companions were run out of town. Luke tells it about, us about it in Acts 17. Some of the Jews were jealous of Paul, so they formed a mob and set the city in an uproar. They cried out, these men who have turned the world upside down have also come here. Paul had to run for his life under the cover of night. But then there were aftershocks. Even though Paul escaped, the Thessalonian believers felt stuck under concrete panels, crumpled steel, and crushed tile. Paul writes about it. You suffered from your own countrymen the same thing those churches suffered from the Jews who killed the Lord Jesus and the prophets, and also drove us out. That's in chapter 2. Paul's talking about some of the previous towns where he had been run out of town by uh, uh, jealous people. There was hopeless and ongoing screaming. I hear screaming at times in people's lives. I'm sure you do too. We all know people who are buried, especially this time of year. December often brings unsettling earthquakes. It could be holiday stress, Christmas blues, massive debt, and it's no wonder this month presents a dizzying array of demands, shopping and baking and cleaning and traveling and entertaining. And then there's that party with that dreaded uncle or aunt. Enough said. For many people, the holidays are a painful reminder of what once was. 
That's especially true for those who have experienced a significant loss, such as the death of a spouse, a breakup, or a divorce. What does Paul do for those he loved and who were suffering so much, who felt as though they were screaming in their pain and loss? Paul prays for them. So can we. We can pray like Paul. First, pray for people to grow in faith. Paul says, night and day we pray most earnestly that we may see you again and supply what is lacking in your faith. Verse 10. Sometimes we think prayer is like a heavenly slot machine. Put in a coin, pull the handle, and presto, maybe we will hit the jackpot. At other times, we think prayer is like a rabbit's foot or a four-leaf clover. It just might bring me some good luck. At still other times, we see a prayer like a visit to a dentist office. You got to do what you got to do. That's not Paul, none of these ways of thinking about prayer. He earnestly prays night and day. In fact, in chapter 5, verse 17, the apostle even writes, pray without ceasing. Look at the content of Paul's prayer, to supply what is lacking in your faith. The term translated supply appears in the New Testament in contexts where fishermen mend their nets. Paul knows that the Thessalonians have faith, they have nets, but Paul also knows this, they are still lacking, their nets need mending. We know that feeling when the net of our life has a hole in it. Life can seem futile. Why try? Why get up in the morning? Why keep on fishing? I'm just going to lose everything again today, just like yesterday. Nets often need mending. Faith often needs strengthening. Look at Paul's prayer more closely. He prays that he is the answer to his prayer. Paul wants to mend their nets. Well, of course, Paul is anything but aloof or distant. Paul dearly loves these people. Second, pray for people to abound in love. May the Lord make your love increase and overflow for each other and for everyone else, just as ours does for you. Verse 12. Question. What do you call it when you put on pounds but don't gain any muscle? You call it read lessing eating too much peanut brittle over Thanksgiving, and that's called fat. What's the point? If we don't increase in love, all we will have is spiritual fat. If we increase in knowledge without increasing in love, all we've gained is a fat head. That's why Paul prays for love to increase and overflow. When our world collapses, the temptation is to become self-absorbed. And being self-absorbed never works. Let me repeat that. Being self-absorbed never works. So we pray for people to begin again, to live outside themselves, to serve others, to assist others, to help others, for their love to increase and overflow. Third, pray for people to become secure in hope. May he strengthen your hearts so that you will be blameless and holy in the presence of our God and Father when our Lord Jesus comes with all his holy ones. Verse 13. What do people need most when they're going through tough times? They need to see the big picture. They need to see what God has planned. Our Lord Jesus will come with all his holy ones. Five days after that massive Chinese earthquake in 2008, a group of rescue workers found the dead body of a young woman. She was kneeling. Her back was hunched over, supporting a crumbled ceiling. Her arms stretched forward, her hands firmly thrust into the muddy earth. As the rescue workers walked away, suddenly the team leader understood. He ran back to the woman and reached under her body. There, in the tiny shelter that the woman created by using her body as a protective shield, was a baby. He was about three months old, alive, unhurt, and sleeping soundly. 
Inside the baby's clothing was a cell phone. On it was this message. My dear child, remember, I love you. Matthew 27, 54 says that the day Jesus died, there was another massive earthquake. But this one was from hell, literally. Talk about being buried and trapped. There was also hopelessness and ongoing screaming. Jesus knows all of that and so much more. But listen closely. His death means you live. His protective shield means you are safe. And his message to you is exactly this. Remember, my dear child, I love you. We pray for others to become secure in this hope, the hope that this crucified and living Christ is coming again to restore everything we have lost. This is the promise of 1 Thessalonians. Lo, he comes with clouds descending. All the years of pain will be erased. Every tear of disappointment will be wiped away. And the symphonies we missed and sunsets we didn't see will be beautifully played over again and again. The health that eluded you in the winter of your life will return a thousandfold. The friends and family members who died in the faith will sit next to you singing in the heavenly choir. The resurrection of the glorified body, more than it ever was in this life. That's Christ's promise to you and me forever. How do we help people who are crushed by holiday stress or loss or depression, who are hanging on by a thread, whose silent screams are ongoing and seemingly endless? We can pray for them. We can pray like Paul. Amen. We sing our next hymn, 336, Lo, He Comes with Cloud Descending. Lo, He comes with clouds descending, once for every sinner slain. Thousand, thousand saints attending Swell the triumph of his train Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia Christ the Lord returns to reign. Every eye shall now behold him, robed in glorious majesty. Those who set at naught and sold him, pierced and nailed him to the tree, deeply wailing, deeply wailing, deeply wailing, shall their true Messiah see. Those dear tokens of his passion, still his dazzling body bears, cause of endless exaltation to his ransomed worshippers with what rapture with what rapture with what rapture gaze we on those glorious scars 
Yea, amen, let all adore thee. High on thine eternal throne, Savior, take the power and glory. Claim the kingdom as thine own. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Thou shalt reign and thou alone. We continue with our prayers. Heavenly Father, we pray from time to time, but we want to pray more of the time. We pray casually, but we want to pray earnestly. We pray for a change in our circumstances, but we want to pray for a change in our character. We pray for our needs to be met. We want to pray for our love to increase. Father, may we pray for love to increase and overflow and for hearts to be strengthened so that your church will be blameless and holy in your presence when our Lord Jesus comes with all his holy ones. Heavenly Father, we pray this night uh, for Reverend Johnson's daughter, Judy, who had surgery today and pray for uh, her recovery. We pray for a number of pastors who are ill at this time, uh, Pastor Jacoby, Pastor Ruish, and others. You know their needs, and we pray for you to be with them. For people that we know, oh Lord, help us to see times when we can reach out to those who are struggling, that we may have our love increase and be of help to them. Yea, amen, let all adore thee, high on thine eternal throne. Savior, take the power and glory, claim the kingdom as your own. Alleluia, 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 thou shalt reign and thou alone. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your whole body, soul, whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We, the one who calls us is faithful, and he will do it. We sing him 350, Come Thou Precious Ransom, Come. Come Thou Precious Ransom, Come, Only hope for sinful mortals, Come, O Savior of the world, open our to thee all portals. Come, thy beauty let us see, anxiously we wait for thee. Enter now, my waiting heart, glorious King and Lord most holy. Dwell in me and ne'er depart, though I am but poor and lowly. Ah, what riches will be mine when thou art my guest divine. My hosannas and my palms graciously receive, I pray thee evermore as best i can savior i will homage pay thee 
and in faith I will embrace, Lord, thy merit through thy grace. Hail, Hosanna, David's son, Jesus, hear our supplication. Let thy kingdom scepter crown, bring us blessing and a salvation that forever we may sing hail hosanna to our king thank you for joining us tonight uh, we pray god's blessing on the rest of your week as we continue in this advent time to prepare for celebrating our lord's first coming in the flesh uh, thankful for his coming in word and sacrament now and looking forward to his final coming in glory. Next week, our midweek service will be on Thursday night due to some other uh, activities going on on Wednesday. So we look forward to uh, seeing you hopefully Sunday and then again next Thursday night. God bless you and uh, peace be with you. Thank you to Brian for being our music leader tonight and Liz for lining up the Zoom. God bless you. Mm -hmm.